Hello friends, welcome to Rajesh Data Engineering. In this video, I am going to talk about access control mechanisms in Databricks workspace object. Access control is one of the very important functionality for any data projects. Let it be database or data warehousing system or coming to modern big data platforms, access control is very very important concept. We should always follow minimum privilege model which means whenever we have to grant some some privilege to some resource in order to perform their day-to-day -day activities we should give only the minimum access that will suffice for them in order to perform day-to-day -day activities we should never go with extra privileges even if uh, in certain cases we need to give extra privileges we need to revoke as soon as the uh, purpose is completed for that particular resource and this access control is also one of the important topic in Databricks development. In today's video, I'm going to talk about that part. Coming to access control in Databricks, first of all, that user, but, uh, user should be added in Azure Active Directory. Any user, if we want to grant access to Databricks environment, Databricks workspace, first of all, that user should be added into Azure Active Directory. In case we don't have any user in the Azure Active Directory, then we cannot grant access to the workspace. Once we have given, uh, once we have added that user in the Azure Active Directory, the next step is within Databricks, we have to create users and groups. User is nothing but one single user for whom we want to grant access. Groups is nothing but combining multiple users into separate groups. Let's say in our environment, we are having 20 uh, users. 10 users are part of our development team, another 10 users are part of production team. In this case, instead of uh, controlling the access for individual users, what we can do is we can create two groups. One is development, we can add those 10 uh, users in that group. Another one is production, we can add those 10 users into the production group. Now, whatever the uh, access we want to control for uh, development, uh, all the developers, we can do in one place using that single group. That is advantage of group, right? Once we have created users or groups, then we can give access to those groups or users uh, using grant access method that I will show. Basically in Databricks, uh, there are four different accesses. One is manage, which means that user can be able to create a new notebook or edit, run, read, delete. It's a kind of full access that is a master one. The next level, edit. Uh, which means the user who got edit access, they can edit uh, the notebooks, even they can run the execution and also they can read the files. Coming to run access, only they will be able to run and read the uh, read the notebooks. The last one, it's only read only access. So these are the different level of access we can provide in Databricks environment. Let's get started with the demo to understand uh, this process. I have logged into Databricks environment. So first step is we need to create users and groups. In order to create user or groups, we have to get into admin console. In the admin console, currently I have three users. If in case we have to add more users, then I can click on add user. Here, let's say I'm going to give some uh, email ID abc at the rate gmail.com. This is the user I want to add into my workspace so that that user can access my Databricks workspace. So let me uh, give OK. Here you can see this particular user does not belong to Azure Active Directory. This is what I mentioned in the slide. First of all, that user should be added to the Azure Active Directory. Then only we will be able to add that user to workspace. But in order to add uh, that user to Azure Active Directory, I have to get into Azure portal. This is my Azure portal. So in order to add the user, we have to go to Azure Active Directory. Yeah, this is my Azure Active Directory. Within Azure Direc Active Directory, I have to get into users. Within user, currently I have only three users, but I can uh, add more users by clicking on this new user. In case that particular user is not part of Azure platform, that user is external, even we can call that, um, call that user using invite external user. But I'm not going to create any user now, but this is the way how we have to add that user into Azure Active Directory. Once this is done, then we can come back and we can create that user. This is how we can create new users. Once users are created, maybe we can create groups 
for that we have to get into groups then we need to click on create new group maybe i want to create a, uh, a group dev team development team create then we can add users for that we have to click this one currently i have only three users but in the real time you will have hundreds of users then you can pick those users for that uh, for that particular group i can select one user then i can click on confirm now i have created one group this is the way how we can create different groups now once we have created users and groups now it's a time to limit the access for any users for that let me get into my workspace in the workspace at the root level we can see one folder is shared another one is users coming to shared you now this is the place where we can uh, put our code that can be seen by all the developers this place is more suitable for collaboration so whenever we are working as a team we can put the common files under this one so that everyone can access but coming to users when we have multiple developers uh, different uh, folders will be created for all the fold all the uh, developers so they will have a lot of code so let's say we are having many users within that we are having many notebooks it's not good idea to give uh, access to all the notebooks to all the users we have to limit so how we can do in order to limit the access either we can go with folder level or with notebook level you know these are different objects that is why uh, this topic is uh, workspace object access control so these are these are the different objects in the in this particular workspace so let's say i have to give i have to restrict access of, for this folder so what i can do is i can uh, click on this um, arrow mark then click on permission then it will uh, show basically currently you know for this group admin there is a group only for that group manage access is granted and apart from that there is one user raja data engineering for that user also uh, the access is uh, granted so here you can notice you know this simple okay this is uh, this symbol is for groups this means it's a group one single user this is user so for both this uh, group and also this user we have given uh, manage you know this is the existing one but now i want to restrict for some other user what i can do is i can uh, choose that particular user in my case now i have a few user maybe let me select some user then we have to restrict what kind of access we are we want to give for that user let me uh, select uh, edit so we are giving edit privilege for this particular user or we can select groups as well uh, here we are having dev team for example i can give dev team and access the corresponding privilege this is how we can give access to particular user or group at folder level the same process is applicable for notebook level as well for example i want to restrict access for this particular notebook so click on this arrow then click on permission same form will be opened once again then you can select it's the same now for which user or group you want to grant which access there are four different accesses as i explained in the slide manage edit run and read this is how we can access uh, we can uh, limit the uh, access uh, to the resources in databricks workspace i hope you understood the concept and enjoyed this video if you like the content of this video please like and comment in the channel also please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell button to get latest updates or data databricks uh, development tips thank you